our guest for this program. He is a financial guru, a business expert, born in Oyi, or G River, Enugu State, in 1973. He has a bachelor degree as well as master's degree in business administration and accounting. He has also a degree in banking and finance from the University of Nigeria and Suka. He also has a PhD in accounting from the University of Uyo. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, the Nigerian Institute of Management, Chartered, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the Nigerian Institute of Credit Administration of Nigeria, and the Association of Management and Social Science Researchers of Nigeria. He is also an associate member, Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. He has over 23 years cognate experience in banking and has handled several managerial position, roles in the branch and regional levels. He started his banking career in the Defunct Citizens Bank, Defunct Citizens Bank in August 20, 2000. He was a regional manager in United Bank of Africa from June 20, 2013 to 2016. Presently, he is the regional head, South-South region in Keystone Bank. He is also chairman, Everyday Food Group of Companies Limited, a privately owned business enterprise that he established in, 20, in 2009. Put your hands to this part of my <laughs> EFG is into marketing distribution of Nestle, Procter & Gamble, Multipro, and Two Shore brands. The group owns everyday supermarkets and runs quick service restaurants with tantalizer franchise. At present, Everyday has over 450 employer, employees. <clears throat> he recently initiated the Magnus Entrepreneurial Round Tab Inner Table, Merit. Merit envisions a society where young entrepreneurs are mentally and economically empowered with ideas and resources to navigate the challenges in the society. The first edition of Merit empowered over 100 people with the capacity to scale and improve their individual initiatives. Also, 15 people were provided with practical mentorship and minimal funding that will propel them to new heights in their chosen industry. He is married to Neka and is blessed with four children. Whom am I, who am I talking about? I, I'm talking about Dr. Magnus Naimeka Chukumeke. Put your hands together as I bring this Colossus. God will help us have an understanding as he impart knowledge. Praise the Lord. Please, please sit down. <laughs> sit down, please. Thank you very much. I am very excited to be here. In fact, um, I gained a lot. I've gained a lot by coming here today. When I came, I heard of mindfulness, and I was like, wow, this is like what I'm about to you know, come and talk about, mindfulness. 
mindfulness. So, uh, you know, Father has, has been my father for a long time. So, <laughs> I, he first, he was my father first before, <laughs> you know what I mean. But I'm happy to be in this common world of champions. Are you happy to be here? I heard about a very wealthy man. You know, we are talking about wealth creation today. I heard about a very wealthy man who had so much money. And then when he was about to die, he told the wife that, look, you are going to bury me with $100,000 cash. You need to put $100,000 into the casket as I'm buried. And um, on, on the day of the burial, the, the wife's sister went to the wife, you know, sneaked into the place. I told the wife, I hope you have not put that $100,000 inside her. The, the woman said, no, now, why not? I, 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 I go to Grace family, I don't lie, you. I don't lie. I've written him a check. He's inside the grave. <laughs> so that is it. You know, did you get that? So the woman wrote a check of $100,000 and put inside the coffin. And case closed. So that's what you get when you are in the midst of champions. When you want to die with your money, we'll write you a check and send you off with that. So today we are talking wealth creation. Wealth creation involves a combination of a lot of things, self-improvement, taking calculated risks, and having sound knowledge of finances. Some people can call it financial intelligence. Financial intelligence is knowing how money works, you know. Being comfortable around money. Being graceful when you are poor, you know. And at the same time, being humble even with so much money at your disposal. Financial intelligence teaches you that money is just, you know, figures. If you have 100,000 and you put another zero, it becomes 1 million, you put another zero, that's what it is. It's not something that is supposed to rule you. You know, the, there is a saying that money is the root of all evils. It's, it's actually when you want money to rule you. But money is meant to work for us. That's why we are here today, talking about educating ourselves about personal finances, understanding the principles of risk and reward, and, and these things will aid you to take, as you take decisions that will grow your wealth as you continue to, you know, exist in, on earth. Because sometimes people think that when you come to church, or when you hear wealth creation, somebody will just teach you how to go somewhere and just carry money. Or you come to church, um, and then as you are going, you see miracle money somewhere. That's why I like what's happening today. We are being taught how to live our lives because it's about mindfulness. It's a, it's a state of mind. It's about mental shift, a paradigm shift in the way we think. So. Building wealth involves a lot. Diversifying investments across several you know, assets like real estate, you do agribusiness, you do distribution, you do a whole lot, uh, retail and the whole, and then acquiring valuable skills you know, with the aim of maximizing returns over time. You know, wealth creation has passed the level of money and cash. You've, you, it has moved into what you call the social and intellectual capital. Social and intellectual capital. There are people who may not, you know, that's what I'm talking about, improving yourself. Improving yourself to be socially um, capable. You know, these days when you want to go for visa interviews, they will tell you what is your social media handle, what, let me have your... Instagram handle, uh, Facebook handle, and the rest of things. They want to know, what are you doing? What do you think? 
how do you relate with people? What do you talk about? What's your, you know, you can, for example, be worshiping in, in, in this place, the GFCC, and you, you are maybe a KK rider, and you are abusing someone on the road. That means your social capital is low. That's, those are the things, and let me tell you, world creation is not about that everybody will become dangote. We are going to get to that. Because God, all fingers are not equal. But at what level you are, you must be doing well, and you must be the best of everything you are doing. So it is crucial that we select what we do and align our financial goals and know what risks we take. So why, why do we create wealth? We create wealth so that you have regular income, uh, so that you, when we are talking about partnership in church, you will contribute. When we talk about, you know, uh, helping people, you do. Financial security, you need to be financially secure. It's not all the time. You know, security is about you, you, are, you are confident that you are okay as a man. You, you don't do anything. You can't, somebody cannot bribe you because you, you are already, you are secured. You know, it's people who don't have money that little money moved. So that is what we are talking about. Enhanced lifestyle. Enhanced lifestyle, it's to live quality life. Not that you will go into what is called lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation, you know, like my friend Anir Khan, that is now the deputy general manager. Tomorrow, you come to his office. If he used to wear a suit, he will say, I'm wear all the suits again. I, have, I want to order new, new sets of suits because I'm now the deputy general manager. It doesn't work like that. That one is called lifestyle inflation. As your money goes high, you raise your expenditure, and at the same time, you know, it brings you back to square one. So that's not what we are talking about. You know, you have increased financial liquidity, and you can achieve goals. You know, when you set out to do something, you get it done. And we talk about philanthropic opportunities. That's why we create wealth. Some people, you know, create wealth just to be of help to other, other people. You know, you don't create wealth to become a stingy man who wants to be buried with $100,000. But at the end of the day, you will get just a check. So how do we create wealth? I want to be, I want to be fast. We've had a lot today. So we run very fast. How to create wealth? First, you become a person of value. Money follows value. You become a person of value. If you are not a person of value, you will not create wealth. You've, you've got to become a person of value. You need to increase your capital, your social capital, your intellectual capital, your whatever you are doing. You know, it's not about having money. Every rich man on earth solved a problem. What are the problems that you are solving? Even in this church today, what is it that you are noticing that people need? It is someone who, who you know, invented light. It's someone who got this microphone for us to use. What, have you, what are you thinking about? You must be a person of value. You must be a person of value. I, you know, you come to a church like this, you know, when you, how do you know people of value? If you, like I'm here, all the while I've been here, I've not had disruptions. Maybe the, the microphone is not working well. Somebody's running up and down to fix it. Some people think that for you to show that you are working hard, you must be running up and down fixing something and all that. But if you want to become a person of value, you must be intentional. And I've heard it today. You have to be intentional about what you are doing. You have to be a person of value. That when you add value to everything you do, people with money will come after you. So you have to invest in yourself first before investing in the market. You have to develop yourself in finances and other areas that are most you know, uh, appropriate to whatever you want to do. You have to invest in yourself before you invest in the market. You need to know what you are doing. Some people will want to go into trade, some business venture, and they don't even understand anything about that venture. That's, you know, you see that people will enter into some kind of business and one week, two months, they're out of it because they didn't invest in themselves first. 
And then the next one is that you must have the right mindset uh, that understands and controls wealth. It begins from the mind. You cannot be rich outside when you are poor inside. You know, the right attitude. You have to have the right attitude. And then you buy assets that can appreciate over time, such as gold, like uh, you buy um, stock and the rest of them. You diversify your investment. You know, you need to generate well-planned multiple streams of income. We heard about multiple streams of income. And I can give you an example. For myself, you know, I have seen a lot of business people. Each time they come and tell me, oh, business is bad and, uh, and all that. Business is bad. I'm not able to survive. But I've, only, I've always survived. Why? Because I, I diversified my, my investment. I started, I had a cold room. I had an eatery. And then I do distribution. So when distribution is not working, maybe that's when uh, the cold room will be flourishing. When they, they start bringing fresh fish from Oron, maybe that's when Milo and the rest of them, the prices will be. So I'm always okay. That's why you need to diversify your investment. If you're a business person, you don't need to just focus. on. And when you are diversifying, you must, you know, check, be careful to know the seasons and of, of what you are diversifying. It's not like you just go and do the same kind of, maybe you are doing building materials, for example. You are selling cement, and then you say you want to diversify into rods. That's not diversification. You are still in the same line of business. Because when the price of cement goes up, uh, and people cannot build, they won't also buy rods. You know, but if you are doing that, and maybe you have something else that's not related that you are doing, that is the real diversification. Then you take financial lessons and trainings to improve your financial intelligence. We've talk, spoken about financial intelligence. Now, there's something everybody we, we will need to do for ourselves. You need to know your net worth because if you want to begin to be intentional about uh, wealth creation, you need to know your standing. So first, you start by asking yourself some questions. How much do I have today? You need to check all your bank accounts. Some people even have bank accounts that they don't even know it, it exists. I, we, I, we called, I work in the bank, so some people, when Central Bank came and said that we are, they're going to take back all, you know, accounts that have been dormant for 10 years, there are some people we called and they didn't even know that they had, you know, the accounts. Money, some had 20 million, some 50 million, some, you know, like that. And they were like, oh, Okay, bring the form. Let me reactivate the account. You know, so that is not how to build wealth. Because the wealth that God has given you is not for you alone. If you check people that are wealthy, I'm not mean people who are rich. Rich people can be rich after being rich. When they die, their children may become poor. That's when you are rich. But when you are wealthy, when you have created wealth, if you've read about, about the owner of wealth, Walmart in, in America. After being one of the richest men in America, he, he passed on. Four of his children are still within the first 20. That's what wealth creation is all about. When I talked about, when I talked about intellectual you know, investment and capacity, you need to, like you are wealthy and you are not training your children in, how, you know, in that direction. Doesn't mean you are wealthy because you may die and all your wealth will become an issue of litigation. People will start scrambling over your wealth. So that's not wealth. So as we, are, as we, as we grow, you need to be, begin to teach your children how to manage wealth, how to be comfortable around money. So that even when you are not there, somebody will, you will be proud that, yes, I left a legacy that my children are carrying on. If you were a wealthy man in Uyo, you were one of the first 20, your children should, should step in and close the gap. Not after you've gone, uh, they begin to sell your property, you know, at giveaway prices. So you need to be intentional. You need to know these things and begin to practice them. So you check your total net worth so that by, by January, you, you know that I'm worth, worth 10 million. At the end of the year, 2025, you check again. What am I worth? 
Because sometimes people think they are rich. And then you see a lot of rich people calling other people to say, please, I need, I need uh, money to pay school fees for my children. Uh, I did one business and it didn't, uh, you know, they are owing me. That's not, you are not wealthy. You are not, you are just, you are just, you are just faking it. You are a fake rich man or wealthy man. So you need to know how many bank accounts do I have, you, you write, and what are the balances in all the bank accounts that I have. That's first. You check, do I have shares in banks or wherever? Do I have shares? You write it down. And then you write again, am I in debt? Who am I owing? I know that you minus it, right? And then if you are a business person, if you, are, if you, if you have... Um, business, maybe you have stock of, of um, uh, anything you have produced, you are selling, or you are a manufacturer, you have stock. You check how much is in this stock, and you put it down. If you are owing any bank, you put it down. At the end of the day, you should be able to say that at the end of December 2024, I had 20 million. By the next one month, you check if you are, and if you start doing this, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. Because that's when you will know that one month has passed. I have not, you know, gained from where I was last month. That's when, when somebody comes to you to tell you about new suits, you will tell yourself, wait. That's also what will give you the impetus not to go to maybe Calabar Carnival and forget about going to, to America one year, right? Because you want to cover up. And if you don't do it, you may think you are growing, but you are not growing. So it's a very important thing we have to do. So we need to do that individually and know where we are. You need to know when to exchange your time for money. It's not, and when to exchange money for your time. You, you need to be, you know, have this discernment, and it's very key. Uh, another way is that you have to render services that people need. You don't sell products that you like. You sell products that people need and will gladly pay for. A lot of people have problems today because, especially women, ladies, they like good, so they want to sell good. And they go into good and they don't do well. Or they like clothes and they want to sell, they want to have boutique and it doesn't go well. Uh, if, if it were to be like that, then maybe somebody like Dan Gute should be selling private jets because he, maybe he has one or two, he likes it. But he doesn't do that. He sells what people need. He sells, you know, sugar, salt. At a point, he was selling uh, noodles because he realized that this is what, what I will make money from. It's, it doesn't, it's not about what you like. So you may like perfumes, but that's not what people need. You can't just go and say, I'm selling perfumes because I, I love perfumes. It doesn't work that way. So we need to know all these things and put them into practice. And then you need to undergo mentorship uh, from experts. There are a lot of experts that can help you. And the, f the other thing is that you need to be very bold. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. And don't be afraid of taking risks. But when you want to take risks, risks must be calculated risks. Not the kind of risk that you want to take. Somebody is calling you to say, I have a business, I'm into rice. Um, if you pay 20000 by next year, month, I will give you, uh, in, uh, what they call it, returns of 10000 That is not risk. And then somebody comes to tell you, oh, I have this business, it's flourishing. Bring all your family members to become distributors of this business. I'm doing it and it's giving me a lot of money. Come and do it. And you go and do it. It means you are not, you are not a Christian. Because as Christians, we learned in the Bible that there's somebody who saw a treasure somewhere. When, and so he hid the treasure first. He, he hid it so that nobody would see. Then he went, sold everything he had and came back to buy it. So if, if somebody is calling you, to come and join one business. Oh, it's called this. If you bring 10 persons, those 10 persons bring another 10 persons. That will bring another 20 persons. That's, that's what, how you, are you the person's brother or sister? It doesn't work. 
that's not wealth. That one is called Ponzi. It's kalu kalu, like gambling. And you do it, you may gain, but you must gain out of another person's pain. That's not, that's not, that's not wealth creation. Where you gather maybe the members, all the members of this church, and then you go into one business, they pay you from the sweat of all these people, and then the business collapses and everybody is crying. That's not wealth creation. That's not what we are talking about. So as you take risks, you must take calculated risks. So there are some skills you need to get uh, nowadays. You know, the world is going global. Uh, you, you can do online stuff. This, we are talking about some skills now. You can sell things online. You can do a lot online. I can tell you my own personal experience. When, when I wanted to start EFG Mats, EFG Supermarket, I wanted to advertise, I wanted to advertise the, the supermarket. And I called for quotations. I wanted to do billboards everywhere. By the time they gave me quotation for billboards, it was about, about uh, 17 million to do billboards for six months. You pay this, you pay upcom, you pay this, you then you, you know, make it and put. And then one night, my wife was telling me, why do you need to spend this kind of money for, you know, uh, billboards? Me, as a banker, you know, we normally, we are very conservative. We don't do, you know, you don't know what you will do. They will fire you. So uh, my wife told me, you know, I used to see some of the things I buy. I buy on Instagram. I buy on, you know, I see some things on Facebook. And some advice I see on Facebook, they have been there. Even when you call them up, 10 years after, you know, they will come up again and you see them. Why don't you get someone on Facebook to advertise this, you know, this opening of math? Make him an ambassador. You may pay some money, but it, you can't spend this 17 million. Maybe you can do this with 2 million. And that's why we went to look for Anie Kemefimba to be our brand ambassador. We paid him money to do that. And he became the brand ambassador. And for more than two years, in fact, you know when you have billboards, you can have a billboard, and the billboard will be there. Somebody will pass, and will have a question. He will not even know what to do. You know, maybe unless he calls the number on the board. But this one, engagements on, on social media alone was helping us to, you know, know what to do even before we opened the mat. And from there on, I, I, I advised myself, and I told myself, if... If I knew could do this and get, why can't I also, you know, get into, into this kind of stuff? And from 5,000 followers that I had then, today I have about 57 to 58,000 followers. So, and if you have a product to advertise now, I can also advertise for you because I have great following. And I know a lot of people are following me on Facebook here. So that's how intentional you can be. You, you need to create online um, presence for yourself. That's the way. Because the world is moving. It's no longer the time that you must, you must go to a shop. OP is now here. I work in the bank and each time I'm going home, I'm trying to look for OP office or money point office. I've never seen. But yet, they're giving me a run. Anybody who ask, give me your account number, money point. OP. That's what online education and business can do for you. So the earlier you start doing something, you are selling rice, you are selling yam, put it out there. Put it out there. Somebody will see it and buy. But like I said, you must be intellectually aware. You don't do things anyhow. If not for anything, for the fact that you are a member of this Grace family. Freelancing. Provide services like motivational speaking, like what I'm doing is freelancing, you know, I'm not like, this is not my job, right? But I'm doing it and I'm enjoying it, right? So uh, you can do that, you can do consulting, you can develop some tech skills. To, yes, um, I think last week, my son that is just about seven you know, years old was teaching me a lot about, you know, computers, you know, what to do. She was, she, in fact, he created a um, calendar, you know, calendar, greetings card for me, created it on the, in, uh, using a computer. 
So if you have children and you are not doing that, you need to do that because that's where the world is going. Tomorrow, everybody is looking at what to do. Tech, you have to develop your skills in data science, web development, and software engineering. You don't even need to go to school for that. You can even be an illiterate and you'll know it. There are, there are courses online. Get these things done. Um, sales and digital marketing. Sell something that people are looking for. Engage in digital marketing and, and affiliate marketing to promote you know, products and services. There are, there are products that you can sell and you collaborate with bigger companies. That's why we move into distribution and franchise. Also, when I, when I used to, when I started business, I had what is called everyday, everyday fish. We used to cook food there. We used to cook food. And at a point, I, you know, I discovered that it, it became just an uyo stuff. So I needed, I needed to, you know, bring in something that even when you come from Lagos, you will be attracted to it. That's why we went for Tantalizers franchise. I don't own Tantalizers. I just got the franchise, and we are running with it. Today, if somebody is coming from Lagos, from anywhere, he will come and eat in Tantalizers. He will not go and be looking for a cow dog because it's not from a Ibom, right? But at the same time, I have localized even the Tantalizers because if you come there too, you will see Afang, you will see Afiefere, you will see You can see anything. With, that you can't see in Lagos. So, so you can localize a global organization. Just look out for them and you, you know, go into such stuff. That's about web creation. You can do real estate, content creation. You can do content creation. That's in vogue now. People are doing that a lot. Uh, along my street, every day I'm going, I'm coming back home, you see children running up and down, doing all manners of things. You can do that. Uh, food services, Starts an outdoor catering service. You know, I, there was some business that is, I, I lost. Why did I lose it? Because I didn't think fast. Do you know that it's no more fashionable for children to go to school with lunch box? It's no more fashionable. It's no more fashionable. All you need to do is, as a food vendor, you go meet a school and you have some quality discussions with them. You know, children will go to school with their bags. When they get to school, during lunchtime, if somebody will come and give them their food to a specification. You want to have rice and beans, they will serve you rice and beans, you know, and the, the parents will pay little money. When I heard it, I almost collapsed because this is what I would have done. I would have been the one doing for many schools, but people are already doing it. So I said, okay, let me face my own. I can't be everything. But, but that, is, that is what people are doing. And somebody sat down and thought about it. And how did I know? One day, I was, my, all the children, they've gone, from, went back to Top Fit and the rest of them. It was only me and my wife and Emmanuel. And my wife wanted to start doing exercises. You know, so she, she was discussing with the person for this. She said she wants to be doing evenings. And in a discussion, so the, the person was saying, what about morning? She said, no, in the morning I have to prepare food for Emmanuel, do lunch box and all that, so that, you know, when they go to school, uh, in the evening, you'll come. And Emmanuel and I said, Mommy, even that you are long, uh, this thing, I don't even, you don't normally cook rice and pepper soup. I don't, your own is always indomie, plantain, this, that, that in my school, there's one woman that brings food for I said, what? And that's how we discovered that this thing has been going on. And we called the woman, paid 10,000. Meanwhile, in, in one week, I would have, the money I used to put inside my shoe when I come back from work, every time my wife would go and take, I, she would have spent up to 20000 in one week. But she paid this person 10000 And in one month, one, I, I was asking, are you, have, you not, have you paid again? She said, no. And the boy, you know, so people are doing businesses. And we, are, we can't just be left out. So that's a person of value. Think and think and think again and get something doing. Media and publishing. You need to start publishing. You can write books. With AI, now you can do a lot. You can do a lot. We have AI, you can write books. The, as a father is preaching, you can write a book. From, in fact, if I, if I come to this place, 
three, four times. I'll write a book. I'll publish a book. Today's message is about like three or four chapters. And then just like that. So what are we doing? You come to church, take notes, begin to, you know, fine-tune it. Add pepper and salt. Instead of, you know, gossiping. Gossip with inside the book and, and bring it out. And that's it. You, you, can, you can also open a school or a daycare center or you go into agribusiness and the rest of them. But anyway, as I'm talking all these things, remember there are a lot of issues with doing business in Nigeria. So I'm going to just point them out. So even as you are thinking, so you know, so you know how to mitigate against these things. First is inadequate information, lack of it, or you know, like, like we are talking now, you don't even know how many um, students, out of school students we have, you don't know how many, uh, but you can get this information. So when I mention the challenge, within yourself, you should be able to how, get mitigants for those things. There's high cost or non-availability of capital. There's no capital. But I'll tell you something, you are, you are social capital, your integrity can get you capital. How I, I do Nestle distribution business today, I do Nestle distribution business today, Nestle gives me almost 300 million worth of goods per time without paying, right? It's because of integrity. I sell, I pay back. I sell, I pay back. So you are in church today, you are a young person, you see somebody and, you know, a well-to-do man and you ask for help. Can you help me with 200,000? He gives you 200,000, you don't pay back. I have a guy, one man in, from my village that asked me for 200,000 sometime. I gave him, he said, lend me. I want to put it in one business, sand business. If we bring out, if we bring sand, we will sell and those other The man never called me again to ask me, I want to pay you back. Now, at a point, that was when I was little. Now, I have the capacity of giving him even two million. But do you think I will give him? So, you know, it's the seed you are sowing. When you come to church, they say, sow seed. You are not just sowing seed of maybe using money to sow seed. What are you doing? What, what are you bringing out? What are you doing? How are you working? How are you relating with people? That's seed. You are sowing seed. I tell you, the, the pastor knows everybody. He knows the seeds that are sowing. I have you know, staff, even domestic staff. I have a driver that when we come back, we come back from work, and he is passing. He sees that the environment is dirty. He picks something. Meanwhile, we had security man in the house, and this driver will pick up, pick up, and clean the place up and move. Do you think that seed sowing? He's sowing seed. Tomorrow, I want to bless someone. You think he's a security man I'll bless? It's not done that way. It's not done that way. After all, even um, in the Bible, somebody, I, don't, I think Esau and Jacob, the blessing came, somebody brought food for somebody, and the man gave out the, this thing. Abby, it's food now. It was food. That's it. So, he's a seed. You know, somebody gave you something. So, that's it. You don't just sit down and be saying that, I don't have capital, I don't have capital. What seed have you sown? This is a time that you build that capital, social capital. Begin gradually. When I started, I started small. I was buying one mil, with 1.4 1, 1. million. I bought, I used to buy cherry noodles. I'll buy cherry noodles, I sell, and I pay back. Somebody left cherry noodles, cherry noodles, that's crown fly meals, and moved to Nestle as a, you know, somebody, something like a commercial manager. He got there and he told them, there's one credible customer I know in Uyo. When he, he buys, he pays, he does, you know, we give him credit, 2.8 million, yes, two trucks, I will sell and pay. And here is Nestle, what, at that time, about 6.7 million. And they gave me six trucks at the go because I sowed the seed of integrity. That's what you need to know. It's not about you know, talking about... Uh, uh, we have other challenges like epileptic uh, and the dilapidated infrastructure, like the power. Uh, there is no good road network. 
the internet connectivity poor. So when you, are, when you want to do things online, you need to know that we have poor internet. But what do you do? What do you do to, you know, uh, mitigate? We also have frequent government regulations and interventions in business. Some are like policies of sorts. Today, you hear that uh, the, there is embargo on rice. You, you may go and hold the one you have. Tomorrow, they will say, remove everything, open everywhere, and the rice you have will, will become dust. You know, all those kind of things. So you need to know that a lot of these things affect. And then you have poverty and adulteration, corruption, and the rest of them. Like in the supermarket, I was shocked. One day, I came to the mat, and I, I was checking something, you know, they brought from Lagos. And I saw something like McLean, McLean. I didn't know it's McDean. There's a way they wrote it. That's it, adulterated. If, if, if we didn't notice it, nobody will notice, and you keep selling. So we need to know as you are talking about business. And it's, you know that people have high taste of, for foreign products. If you are, some people can go into shoemaking here, but when you are making, you will know that you know, your competitors are from Spain and France. One of my friends made clothes for me. He didn't know the kind of person I was, and he finished making. He put carving clean in the clothes. And said, ah, sorry, but you are the one. You are in Abba. Why are you putting carving clean? He said, oh, guys, it's because uh, you, I want to impress you so that when your friends see it, I said, well, what, what concerns me with my friends? It's me that is wearing it. As a matter of fact, there is a kind of, there's something I, I can't wear. I, can't, I, I won't just wear because I want to impress people. How many of you know that I, I, I didn't, I'm not wearing a wristwatch? I'm not wearing a wristwatch. And you know why? Because if I wear it, you will not see. Be, you know, the, the suit was covering it. So, and if you will not see it, why do I need to wear it? I want to wear it. I won't. I went, to, I, went to, I went to America, and I was looking for Thai to buy. And they told me, you know, $50. I was like, Thai, $50. And my wife was telling me, uh, I was already packing like five. I said, did you, did you check the price? By the time we multiplied, I said, if I, if I wear this tie, it means that I will just knot the tie, and I won't wear any other thing. I will not only the tie. Because it, it, why, why would I spend that kind of money? It, it beats, it beats, it beats everything about wealth creation. Because for any business, for anything you are doing, there are any expense you are making, if you want to build wealth, any expense you are making must pass the warrant test. Uh, uh, Bossa will tell you, he used to teach us about wholly, reasonably, exclusively, and necessarily. Is that cost wholly done for the purpose of that business? Is it reasonable? Like you want to buy a tie of fifty dollars? How is it reasonable? It's not. Is it necessary? You must ask yourself. So you want to, you are doing business, or you 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 are a young man. You want you go and buy iPhone iPhone fifteen, and all you are using it to do is to make call and all that. It is not reasonable. It's not reasonable. Unless you are making, in fact, if you have any phone, you need to check the cost of that phone. And if you are not making income from that phone that is higher than the value what you bought it, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Why? Why would you do that? Unless you have the iPhone 15. And because you have it, it attracts the governor to call you and say, come and take this contract. Good. But if it is just to make useless calls and talk, vain talks, there is something wrong. Go and change it. Sell it and do something meaningful with the money. And then there's crime and uh, insecurity, multiple taxation. In, in, in the mat, I run the mat. I, you know, people will come and tell me that the, be, be, you have to... Uh, the, what do they call it? The signpost. You pay for signpost. After paying for signpost, they will come for your local government will come and tell you, okay, you will pay for the display. 
This one will say, you pay for uniform, your, your people are, you know, all manners of things. So many things. And then there's also skills gap. Skills gap. Skills gap. People are not there. If I say today, I need so so and so, I want people who study this, come and work, that's when you know that we have a problem. A lot of people are not equipping themselves. You need to equip yourself for the future because a whole lot will happen. You know, in those days, we used to use IBM to give example. Oh, if they knew that computers will come. Oh, if Kodak knew that phones will come. That, you know, like what he's doing, these cameras, young people are using phone. Somebody will just phone. They're snapping you. Before you know it, they create something out of it. So then we need to move away from not getting skills. We have skills deficiency in Nigeria, and then you have high employee turnover. So when you are thinking of doing business, you need to know how do I mitigate against some of these things. So to test your readiness, you need to test your readiness. If you want to start a business, for example, maybe you, you, you want to stay, you need to ask yourself questions. Am I ready to start a business? No. Why do I want to start a business? Do I just want to start for starting sake? Do I have the skills? Do I have the resources, the qualification, and the experience? Can I do it? One, you know, when I, when I started doing cold room business before, I thought that since I went to school, I, I studied accounting, I'm a smart, I'm a very smart boy, why wouldn't I be able to do business, cold room business? And I opened the cold room, I went to Potakot and brought a lot of fish, mackerel, all those things, and brought and kept in my, in my, in my uh, cold room and said, oh, business starts. Ha. They, that's when one boy, they brought one boy from, you know, and he came and looked at the cold room. He said, sir, this mackerel, we will not sell, we will sell it to you. You will need to find someone in our back to go out. And I'm like, what are you saying? Is it not fish? So do you know the business you want to start? You know, it's not every business you must start. If you want to start, you need to go and learn. Somebody asked me, how are you doing supermarket business? Are you doing it well? Because I studied it. I took two years to study it. Go and do it, you'll fail if you don't study. A lot of people, in fact, before I did it, I had to pray and pray because I was like, is it not this thing that somebody will, as they are passing, they don't carry one suite, put it in their pocket. I said, my money will finish. But I went to learn how to have control of, of my business. You em employ people, every, if you come there, people are looking at you. The only thing is that, you know, you need to constantly be on your toes. It's not a business you are doing and you are doing one leg in, one leg out because you have a lot of stakeholders, your suppliers, the people, you, you, you want to make sure that your suppliers are happy. Because when they are not happy, just one mistake, they don't supply you. People will come to your, your supermarket to look for something and they don't see it. That's it. That's it. They move to another supermarket and they move to another supermarket. You know, so do, are you scaled? Do you have the scale? If you don't have, you go and learn. Have you run a business before? Have you owned one? If you have not, you need to check that. Are you ready to do it by yourself? Or can you trust others to do it for you? I tell you, I have tantalizers, one and two, one at Abak Road, one at Waneba. I have never visited any of them in the last one year. The mat, I have not. The last time I went to the mat, I was in the car, I think two Sundays ago. I was in the car, and my wife went to go and pick some things. I have not. You know, so are you ready to trust people? One man in my village opened the business, and his, his boy who was in that place, the elder brother of that boy bought a motorcycle for the boy. The, mom, the man saw this, his boy with motorcycle, a new motorcycle. Uh, that's it. He has stolen my money. And that's how the business started having problems. Suspicion and the rest of them. Are you ready to trust someone? If you are not ready to trust, then you go and sit there and do it yourself. It's simple. You must learn how to trust people, how to delegate, and how to monitor your business. Those are the issues. So you need to test this. And then are you ready to accommodate criticism? Are you ready? The other day, 
Somebody said, is that one, is that one, is that one a business? I beg, shift. You will go and die because somebody said something. You know, your business is not good. You must be ready to accept and seek for feedback. And are you ready to deal with competition and business risks and changing business climate? Are you ready to do that as you are looking at world creation? These are the things you ask yourself. And I like what uh, uh, Father said. He said, we would think, we we'll go and review all these things and then ask questions, pertinent questions. We'll now begin to answer you know, them at a later date. So are you ready to deal with competition? Is it the one that when anything happens, you, you start to demarket the other person? No. The world is too large. The world is too large. No, there's no business you'll bring now that you, even if it's a car that you want to fry, just be the best a car fry. Be the best and you'll get it. Who would have thought that this number of persons will be here today? Who would have thought? They would say, oh, after all, we have too many churches already, but look at this. Few years, full house. Glory to God. <laughs> Can you accept failure as part of the learning process? Sometimes you may fail, you may do something and you fail. You must be able to accept failure. If you cannot accept, then you know you are not ready to start business. Uh, then, do you understand the laws that guide the business you want to do? Like I, I was telling you about the cold room business, I didn't also know that before you sell fish at Akmanandem, you need to buy one goat, three crates of drinks, and go and meet the, the association, the people who are If not, they will not buy from you. So that's the regulation. That's their own. That's the law. So you need to be sure that you do that. Now, Wealth creation is, doesn't mean that everybody must be dangote. All fingers are not equal, right? And in the Bible, if you read the parable of the talents, there was somebody who was given five talents, the other one, four, three, two, one. The one that was given one talent went and hid it and said, that wicked man, when he comes back, I'll just give him back his thing. I don't want his trouble. And when the man came back, he said, you could have at least put this thing in the bank to earn me interest. Why did you just do this? That is what happens in life. As you heard from me today, you may say, oh, it's not for me. I'm not a millionaire. I'm, I, well, when it gets to my turn, at any level you are, you are a wealthy person. You may not be wealthy today. My father was not wealthy, but today he's wealthy. In fact, when we were growing up, my, my, my father was a principal. He had a boy's quarter. He used to call that house boy's quarter, you know, an L-shaped house. And today, that boy's quarter is really a boy's quarter because I've come to put a main building beside it today. So he may not have been a rich man, but to, in his presence, I've been able to achieve something that he's proud of. So you don't need to tell yourself that, I'm, I'm, you know, I can't be part of this. I'm not wealthy. You mustn't be dangote. So, and when you, you feel that your, God has given you little gifts, let me not do anything with it. How it works is that you will begin to annoy God. So, if you are a cleaner in this place, and that's the job God has given you, you must be tops. You must be doing it with all diligence. Because as you are doing it, doing it, one day, the pastor may ask you, you may come to the and say, I have a child who got admission to go to, to UNU and I don't have money. And the pastor will say, I will pay the school fees. It is that diligence. It's the way you were working. How you were glorifying God with the job he has given you. You were creating wealth that you will enjoy in your old age. Because when your son graduates and gets, starts working, he comes back and starts taking care of you. But if you say, I'm a cleaner, what? Well, let me just clean. You just come. You clean the place anyhow, even if no matter what, you just clean and you run away. You will never get it right. And that's what the Bible is talking about. That even if you are little, in what capacity, whatever capacity, you must handle it with care. Everything we have is from God. 
and God has made each of us a manager. That's why during creation, after he has created everything, he didn't rest until he created man and handed over the job to the man. If you want to know how creation happens, if we all leave this place today and we don't come back in the next 30 years, when you come, this whole place will be overgrown with weeds because there's no man in it. As long as you're a man, you must be creative. You must be managing everything that you have. That is wealth creation. You mustn't be a billionaire before you create wealth at whatever level you are. Continue to influence, continue to do well, and in conclusion, this is a deliberate approach to inten an intentional process that is achieved over time. It's not a quick fix stuff. You can't just come today and you get it all right. No, it is something intentional. It is growing your money to live the life of your dreams. You may not, you, you may not live the dreams today, but I can tell you, your children can make you live the life of your dreams. When you invest in them and they become wealthy in your lifetime. Thank you very much for having me. God bless you.